The map. It's been pretty, um, a lot of people asking about it. This is probably our most requested product for you, uh, the Ford Mavericks. Once those emails are sent out, we'll tell you the end date of the production. So like, you don't see that on your end as the consumer, you'll know that it's starting, starting to be built. So you don't know when the actual oh, end date of the Oh, you guys do Yeah, we do on our side. So the Maverick is what the Ranger could have been. Welcome to Motos, Cades, and Coffee. Hey, good afternoon, guys. Andy from Motos, Cades, and Coffee. I bought a brand new pickup truck, a 2022 Ford Maverick Hybrid, an XL Hybrid. I move a lot of arcades, pinballs, and video games, and motorcycles, and I thought this might be the, the best vehicle for it. Great fuel economy, great price. I'll get into why I bought this vehicle, but today I want to tell you about what dealers think about this vehicle and what it's like to sell this vehicle in today's post-COVID era. So let's get right into it. I purchased a vehicle from Facility Ford in uh, Seneca Falls, New York, and let's go talk with Tony. He's a dealer and my salesman and find out what he thinks about the Ford Maverick Hybrid. Hey guys, we made it to Facility Ford. We're gonna go talk to the salesman. We literally drove through a blizzard to get here, like five blizzards on and off. Yeah, and you can see from the car, we drove through a lot of snow. Um, we're in a clear patch right now, and let's go talk to him and see what we can find. And I'm here with uh, Tony, a salesman uh, that's kind of been working with me to get my Maverick here. Cool. And uh, like I said, we've uh, we've been talking quite a bit and just kind of going over uh, some of the details. And we just kind of wanted, I drove up here today, just sure. kind of say hello as well. Okay. And just kind of talk about the Maverick and the buying process and kind of everything that you've uh, experienced with the Maverick and people okay. asking about it stuff. So first of all, the Maverick has been pretty, um, a lot of people asking about it. Sure. Yeah, no, um, actually, it's, <laughs> this is probably our most requested product right now, uh, the Ford Maverick is. Okay. Um, right now we have, uh, actually we have nine orders in right now. Um, I have probably 20 people on a waiting list. You're one of the lucky ones that was actually able to secure an order on one. Um, but th there's a big constraint right now, obviously, with the, the chip shortage and everything going on uh, with Ford at the, the moment. Right. Um, it's kind of a, there's too much demand for the product and not enough supply. Um, but like I said, you're one of the lucky ones that actually was able to secure an order. And yeah, I'd be happy to discuss all that with you guys. So. Oh, very cool. And so of the nine orders that you have, yep. how many of you have you, uh, been working with or have been the salesman for? Um, so you're the third one that I've actually uh, 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 worked with. Um, I do all the new car orders, so I've actually had my hands in all nine of them. Okay. But as the actual salesperson, um, I've been here with third one. So. Okay. Yep. And something really interesting, most people, um, and the way Ford has been switching to, have actually ordered Mavericks. But I'm a little bit different because the dealer ordered one, or did someone back out, or how did that work out? No, nope, so that was actually, that was just an extra allocation that we had. Um, so okay. that's, that's a different that's a different scenario. So like, the way it worked with the Maverick was you actually had a, uh, there was a reservation process for them. Okay. Those reservations were switched uh, to orders, so like meaning, once you secured a reservation, Ford opened up an order bank, and then Got those it. people that had the reservations, they were the first ones that were able to secure the order. Got it. But on top of that, the dealer also gets a certain allocation for stock. Okay. You you were one of the ones, you, I had an extra stock allocation, so I just turned that into an order for you, so. Very cool. Yep. And of the nine that you have, what's the mix that you've been getting mostly? So the majority of them are front wheel drive, um, the, the front wheel drive model. We do have a couple of the all wheel drive orders in as well, but the, the, the hybrid powertrain seems to really be the, the, the top sellers. Right. So, yep. And of those hybrid top sellers, what spread has been the most requested on the XL, XLT, the Lariat? Um, or does it matter? I mean, there's a good mix in there. Without looking at my computer, I would say the majority of them are probably XLs. The, you can't beat the price. Oh my goodness. The, the price right. point's amazing. Um, right. So, I mean, in my opinion, with the Maverick, that the Maverick is what the Ranger should have been when they when they and we discussed this on the phone. We did, we did. So when Ford announced its Ranger, I think it was four or five years ago when they announced the Ranger. That's the Ranger. The Ranger ten years ago was a mid-sized truck. All right, right, that, right, that was like your small to mid-sized truck. It was priced about twenty to twenty-five thousand right. dollars. When they discontinued that product in two thousand eleven and they came back out with it. They repriced the vehicle. The starting MSRP of a Ranger now is like thirty-five thousand dollars. It's fifteen thousand dollars more than it was, you know, ten years ago. Um, that really pushed a lot of the, the, the people that were previous Ranger owners out of out of that market. Yes. So, like when they announced the Maverick and they announced the price point of the Maverick and the size of it, the Maverick now is equivalent to what the Ranger 
was 10 years Back ago. Yeah, and, and I think that's really, you know, what the Rangers should have been when they re-announced it. So it's, it's been really one of our top sellers. So that's cool. Because of that reason. Right. Have you had actually any in the vehicle that have been delivered in customer hands? Uh, yeah, we have uh, two or, I believe yeah. two total, maybe three. There might be three total that have been delivered. And how soon after ordering did they get their Mavericks? So the two that the two that I know of, I think there's a third one there, but the two that I know of, they were actual reservations that were okay. converted to orders. Okay. Um, but the turnaround on that at the time frame when the reservation went live was about I want to say it was about five months. Okay. Right now there's <laughs> there's a lot of moving parts um, with the chip shortage that's not ending, um, and then all this crazy stuff that's going on in Russia right, and with right. Taiwan and stuff right now. Right. Um, that is pushing things out a little bit. Okay. Um, but I would say the average turnaround time for a, a person that places an order fresh out of the fresh out of the gate, the average turnaround time realistically is probably closer to six to eight months. Your time frame I think is gonna be much shorter than that. So see mine I ordered in December yep. of twenty twenty one. It yep. is now March, mid March, 2021, 2022. What are you thinking for time frame? I would I would expect yours to be here sometime in June, possibly July. Okay. Yep. Um, so. I don't have any. I got an XL with uh, a tow package. Yep. And actually, I have the bill sheet right here. Oh, for well, you. awesome. We'll take a look at that. I'll show some video. <laughs> and th there's no extra like special delays on that bill, right? Is nope. That nope. That's um. I mean, so like, um, Ford has a system in place where like they allocate um certain components on the vehicle based on like like the amount of orders that they have coming in okay so like if if they know that the the number one ordered uh, uh the number one ordered sub model is going to be the xl um in the front wheel drive model um they they actually have like an internal system that tells them like how many of those orders are in place and they allocate the parts and stuff uh, uh, according to that so like they'll push the majority of the builds to that sub model. So like yours being, I, I definitely think like yours being the, the Maverick, the front wheel drive, um, I, I do think yours will be one of the first ones produced. So. Okay. Yep. Okay. So now if it was a funky one, say it was like it was something funky like a, uh, uh, a Lariat, um, all wheel drive, that's a 40. Orange or something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, that would be like, that'd be like a $40,000 build, $35,000, $40,000 build. Um, that's going to be like one of the ones that's like, you know, not as desirable. So that order typically will be pushed out a little further. Okay. So, yep. And um, have you driven one yet? You know, <laughs> I, I actually, uh, I hate to admit it, I actually have not. Um, the ones that came in, we were actually uh, instructed to, to actually not actually get in them <laughs> or drive them because, cool. there's, because they're such a hot product. So, like, if it was something like, say, like a normal vehicle that, you know, uh, a normal everyday vehicle, say like a Ford Escape or something, um, we're allowed to demo the vehicles, drive them, um, get in them. But, you know, the, the people that waited this long for that product, we didn't want to put miles in their vehicle sure. or excessively, you know, God forbid, say we drive it down to the gas station or something and, and crash that vehicle. Right. That's a huge risk. So we were actually instructed not to drive those vehicles. <laughs> Um, yeah. Same thing. Same thing. Like when a, when a Shelby comes. In. Say we get a Shelby, a GT five hundred comes yeah, in. Yeah. Um, you don't want to. That's excessive risk to get in the vehicle, drive it. Um, I haven't had a chance to drive one. I've been inside the vehicles, and uh, as well. <laughs> yeah, and, and I'll tell you right now, they're they're exactly they're they're actually the expectation has been exceeded. Um, the build quality on them is great. Um, I, I think they're a perfect a perfect product. Have anyone come back uh, like for oil change or anything to talk about it after they bought it from here or not really? Um, as of right now, so both the, the both the ones that we've already sold, one was sold to Buffalo, and oh, wow. actually, and actually, which is about two hours west of us, yeah. and the other one actually went to Ohio. So um, this was going to Maryland. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> um, it's, we're, we're in a weird, we're in a weird spot right now. We're like um, based on the shortages. Um, yeah. A lot of the vehicles we're selling now, yeah. they're going cross country. Um, I, I can't tell you. I mean, in the last uh, probably half a year. Um, I would say I'd wager probably a quarter of the vehicles we sell go no, out of state. Did the so. people actually come here to, to pick them up, or did you ship them out? Um, so, so the one from Ohio, the guy came here to pick it up. Okay. Um, on a couple of the other products, on the Maverick, that one was actually picked up here. Yeah. But um, on one of our GT 500s, that was shipped. Okay. Um, a gentleman actually out of Massachusetts bought that vehicle. That was shipped. Okay. Um, it, it goes back and forth. Some people like to pick them up. Some people like to have them shipped. There is an extra cost to having it shipped. Yeah. Um, it's usually about a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars to have it shipped. Okay. So, uh, what do I need to know? Um, so I got an email saying that hey, my Mavericks board is in place, yep. and uh, be on the lookout. What do I need to know next? So the uh, board has a system in place where, like, um, when you actually order your product, they'll send you an email saying they confirmed your order. 
when the vehicle actually starts production, you'll get another email that says that, hey, we've started production okay. on, your, on your product. The next step after that would be they'll send you an email. And, and the dealer, the dealer, we as a dealer would be in touch with you as well too. Okay. Um, we have an a internal system at our store where once those emails are sent out, we're actually tagging those emails. So we also call the customer because not everybody checks their email um, frequently. Okay. okay. So like we call you and tell you that, hey, your car has started production. We'll tell you the end date of the production. So like you don't see that on your end as the consumer. You'll know that it's starting, starting to be built. But you don't know when the actual oh, end date. Oh, you, you guys do. Yeah, know that. we do on our side. So we, we try to give you guys like that like time frame. That's cool. And then um, on top of that, um, we'll also um, you'll get an email saying that the product's been built and it's planned for shipping. Same thing. We'll contact you, letting you know, hey, this is the day it's expected to be shipped, and then here's the day it's expected to be here. The last step is, and you don't get this from Ford in an email. You'll get it from your dealer. And like I said, we we specifically, it really a lot of this boils down to like really what dealer you want to buy from a dealer that you trust because like the dealer it makes a big difference. So like at our store specifically, we'll keep you posted throughout the entire process. So like you'll get an email from Ford when your product is shipped. Ford will tell you it's on a rail car. You'll get it, you know, in a couple of weeks. And the dealer can actually tell you where it's located. So that's cool. Yeah. So like typically speaking, like say say it leaves Michigan, we'll tell you okay it's on a rail car. It's leaving Michigan now. When it arrives, say in uh, Ohio. We'll call you and say, okay, your your truck has arrived in Ohio. And okay. then the next step is, you know, it gets shipped from like Ohio to Buffalo. Okay. And Buffalo is two hours from us. Once we know it's in Buffalo, I can tell you, hey, it's expected here in a couple of days. And do, so is that where the um, the main location? Because I think this was built in Mexico. Yep. Is like a hub Buffalo, and then they get transported on a on a semi. Is that how it works usually? Here? They typically are transported on a rail car. Cool. Well, really, that's the uh, only questions I had. I wanted to stop in. It looks like a, a very cool dealership. Yeah, we, um, we uh, just built this place three years ago. It's, for uh, real? it's a brand new store. How long have you been uh, uh, selling uh, vehicles, and how, how long have you been here, I guess? So um, I actually have been here for been here for 12 years. Okay. Um, my, I, was, I was one of the fortunate young, young, young uh, kids that was able to get a job at 16. Wow. Um, our owner actually hired me when I was 16 years old. Okay. Um, I detailed cars for a couple of years. I've been selling cars now for about seven or eight years now, so... And a little bit of shift in the last few years on how cars are being sold. It's uh, it's some crazy stuff. I've never <laughs> seen anything like it. It's a totally different landscape. Yeah. Um, you know, normally we run our store specifically. We run about a hundred to one hundred and twenty new cars in stock, anytime, any any, any particular point. Uh, at this particular point in time, right now, we have uh, six or seven in stock. So we're running about ten percent capacity. Wow. Um, it's some crazy stuff. Um, you know, the days of like going to a dealer and like just like seeing like rows and rows of cars and being able to pick one out, it's um, it's sad for us to see, but you know, we're working with you know the best we can. And yeah. in a weird sense, it is kind of cool. Like, I, I do like shifting a little bit to the order format because you know, I mean, instead of like people settling for a car, say they want like a red, you right. know, a red Maverick or something, right. at least now they're getting exactly what they want because they can order. Yeah, okay. it, it's a little bit different, but we're we're you know, doing the best we can, and okay, I, I guess I kind of like it. It's it's, cool. it's different, so cool. Yep. Well, great. I really appreciate it. Those are the only questions I had. Cool. Uh, again, I wanted to stop by, and uh, thanks for letting Dude, me. Dude, uh, glad you stopped by. I yeah, appreciate it. Right? Much, <laughs> Thank you, and we'll actually pick uh, this back up when the Maverick comes in next, and you'll be ready for episode two. So, thanks again, Tony.